All right, Alexander, we had uh, regional elections in Italy, correct? Regional? Absolutely, absolutely. Regional okay, and, and, and we have the results of those uh, elections. What's, uh, what's going on in Italy? Uh, she, uh, right. I mean, there is, again, clear signs now of Italy once more shifting to the right. Now, if you remember what happened last year, uh, um, Salvini was leveraged out of office in a very complicated intrigue. He was the very popular interior minister. He seemed to be the most powerful person in the Italian government. And then the Italian government was reconfigured. The Five Star Movement went into alliance with the Democratic Party, which, by the way, is the successor. Democratic Party is the successor of the old Italian Communist Party. It seems extraordinary. But anyway, the Five Star Movement, which is sort of a narco leftist party at one time, went into alliance with its old enemy, the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party is the party of the Italian establishment. It's um, essentially the Europeanist globalist centrist party in Italy now. The Five Star Movement went into coalition with it and Salvini was left out in the cold and there were criminal proceedings brought against him on the basis that he kidnapped refugees because he stopped a ship coming in with refugees and all of those things. And for a certain amount of time, there was a lot of talk in the media that the Salvini was in uh, an eclipse and that um, he was finished. And um, also the Italian government, Conte, Giuseppe Conte, the prime minister, for a time was able to use the pandemic crisis in Italy, which was very harsh to his political advantage. What these local elections show is that that period, that temporary period of the ascendancy in Italy at the centre left, which I never really believed in, is ending. There was a swing to the right, and the sense of that is that um, places like the Marches, which is a region in central Italy, which historically was a left-wing region, has now gone over to the, cent to, to the right-wing parties that are led by Salvini. There's now several of them, but what you know, the Le Lega Nord is still very much the dominant one amongst them. Now, you won't get that impression from reading the media, because what the media always do is they always create the impression of a breakthrough where it is not going to happen. And when it doesn't happen, they trumpet a big defeat. Now, there were two regions, which are Campania, which is the region around Naples, and uh, Tuscany, which is basically the region around Florence, which are still controlled by the left. And Salvini was supposedly going to win over Tuscany. There was never a chance he would win in Campania. Um, and of course he didn't. Um, and, you know, they made out that this somehow proves that, you know, Salvini's tide isn't really forging forward in quite the way that um, it seemed that he would. Well, that is simply isn't true. I mean, if you know Italy at all, I mean, it would take an awful lot, an awful lot more for Tuscany to go right. I mean, this is extremely unlikely to happen. It's like, you know, expecting, you know, California suddenly to become Republican. One day it may happen. It's not going to happen now. I, I'm slightly exaggerating. But anyway, the, the best metric for this is to consider that, you know, five years ago, the right, the right wing parties ran three out of 20 Italian regional governments. They now run 14. So that gives you some idea of how far they're advancing. And I talk about Salvini. The important thing to understand is that there are now parties which are emerging, which are more Eurosceptic and more right-wing in some ways, or at least more, more nationalist than he is, or than his party has been. There's, there's a, a party called the Brothers, for example, which is starting to emerge. So I, I don't think these parties are any kind of challenge to him, and some of them are too right-wing for most Italians, but they do show the current of opinion in Italy. And just as 
Farage, the emergence of Farage pushes the Conservatives in Britain in a certain Eurosceptic direction. So the emergence of these parties, if you like, is a reminder to Salvini that if he doesn't continue in a Eurosceptic direction, there are others who would be prepared to do it instead of him. So it's, it's, an, it's an interesting development in Italy, certainly one to keep watching. But it seems to me that what it shows is that what we were talking about on the Duran a year ago, when the intrigues that removed Salvini took place, that he'd come bouncing back, are, are, are proving true. This strange year when Salvini seemed to be marginalised and the centre and centre-left seem to be back in the ascendancy. This strange year is now passing and we are returning to the situation as it existed a year ago. Has uh, Salvini uh, solved these uh, the legal issues around oh, yeah. the, uh, the, the boat and the ship and all that stuff that was plaguing him? That, no. That was I being mean, brought against the government to try and remove him? No, no. I mean, they're still ongoing, but I mean, that isn't anything unusual in Italy. I mean, in okay. Italy, legal proceedings are brought regularly against prominent politicians and they go on forever. And, you know, the, there's a usually a circus of, uh, you know, hearing here and appeal there. It's the Italian legal system is absolutely in, unbelievably complicated and unbelievably politicized. And, you know, you the cases can go on for decades. These kind of cases can go on for decades without any kind of resolution. I mean, Berlusconi was constantly the target of cases. So I, I, I don't think this case is actually going to do him any great, Salvini any great damage. And I think he can ride them out. And in fact, if anything, it, it's probably actually helping him because it's such an absurd case on its, on its face. And if they push it too hard against him, there will be a reaction. It will backfire. So I, I, I think it, it's a nuisance, but it's also probably an advantage. But I don't think it's a decisive thing. And I certainly don't see him go to prison or anything like that. Is he still on course to uh, to be the front runner for for a nationwide uh, election to be oh, uh, yeah. prime minister? Oh, he, yes. He's still He's on course. He's still the most popular figure in Italy, a politician in Italy, without any question. And I'm going to say this, after these results, his popularity, in my, in my opinion, will grow. Bear in mind that Italy is back in recession, severe recession. Things are not good there. And um, all of these uh, deals that were done, which we were talking about in the European Union last summer, have turned out to be absolutely worthless and are not helping Italy at all. So, you know, all, all he's got everything to play for. Um, but the emergence of these other parties is a reminder that he needs to stick to his guns. All right. Interesting development in Italy. We will be watching it closely. Alexander Mercurius, thank you very much. Guys, like this video, click on that subscribe button. Hit that like, smash that like, share this channel with everybody you know. Please donate to us on PayPal, Patreon, and subscribe star. Your donation really helps out this channel. And please go to the Duran shop, pick up some merchandise that also helps out this channel. Indeed. And let me remind you what amazing things they, that we have. I mean, this is a mug. These are amazing magic mugs with the flag of the United States, this one. But we've also got smaller ones with the flag of Greece. We've got our mugs now in two sizes, large and small, perfect for whatever type of tea or coffee you're drinking from if you know you have an espresso or a greek coffee it's a you know the greek mug that you see there is probably the better size if you want to drink a hot chocolate as my wife likes to do well perhaps one of the bigger mugs might might suit you and of course we've also got them in enamel and here's an enameled mug with the flag of england the largest kingdom within the united kingdom of great britain and these are, by the way, the perfect mugs for outdoors. So you see, we've got mugs in every size and for every occasion, indoors and outdoors. And they are the best mugs in the world. And they come with many flags now of many countries. If you can't see your own flag there, 
wait a little, it will come. And if it doesn't, let us know and we will do what we can to accommodate you. And we don't have just flags on our mugs. We have them also now on our hats. As you see with this one, there is a, a, a hat with the flag of the United Kingdom, the Union Jack. And in fact, I've got two. Uh, also, this one has the Union Jack on it but they come also with many other countries. In fact, lots of countries. And we have not just uh, um, hats with, fla with flags, but our shirts, our amazing shirts. Also, many of them now come with flags. Flags of all the countries. And can I remind our viewers, our shirts, like our hats are the, and our mugs, are the best. They're 100% cotton. They're long-sleeved and short-sleeved T-shirts. They're amazing polo shirts. They are fantastic and phenomenal and incredibly comfortable to wear. And they also, we also uh, look marvelously well in our in our amazing hoodies, which we also have. So you can get these wonderful things from our shop, and you can also get our eBooks there. And you support our channel by coming to our shop. So come to our shop. Get these great things. Alex will remind you how. Just go to the Duran shop. You'll find the link in the description box down below. Alexander Merkers, thank you very much. Till next time, everybody, take care.